Okay, well here's a common memory dim used in a personal computer, of course. Uh, let's uh, tear one down and take a look at the silicon and some of the engineering. It's actually fairly interesting uh, to take a look at these, uh, what are pretty common and mundane looking items. Uh, the first things that uh, we note, of course, is there's obviously the DRAM packages providing the storage. Uh, and then there's a semiconductor in the middle there, I'll get to in a second. So here's one of the DRAMs I desoldered from that dim, and it's uh, in a package called a ball grid array. And if we flip it over, you can see why it gets its name the actual connections, uh, of course, little solder balls, uh, and of course, the inner grid. Now, what's extremely unique about uh, DRAM is they have something called a center bond uh, pattern. Uh, if you look at the substrate closely, you can see there's a stripe here, and uh, rather than being the sort of the fiberglass material you would expect of the substrate, uh, this is actually hiding some bond wires. And uh, they do that because uh, they're trying to um, reduce the amount of uh, capacitance and uh, the length of the connections. If they put the uh, bonds on the edge of the wires, you'd have to go all across the die to get the memory rays, or if you put them on both sides, you end up with uh, more connections than desired. What we're looking at here is uh, what happens if you put a, one of these components into acid and uh, strip away the epoxy. Uh, we can see the substrate, which is a, a fiberglass matting here, and you can see a slot has been cut into it. And that's because what happened is they uh, took the uh, silicon die and they have bond wires that come up over and they then attach onto the substrate here and then eventually of course there's a copper pattern on the substrate and they put a ball of solder here but this is very unique i don't think i've seen any other semiconductors other than d rounds which use this uh, center bond arrangement let me just insert a, a macro photography of this uh, silicon die it's a little bit hard to see at this level and uh, you can see the bond wires uh, looping up beautifully and then coming down onto a landing pad so one perennial problem with uh, computers, of course, is they can be configured in multiple ways and uh, firmware needs to know what it's looking at. Uh, so here's this uh, small memory device that's in the middle of the board. Uh, it's uh, an SPI uh, memory, and uh, it's also known as a Serial Presence Detect uh, ROM. Uh, the lower 128 bytes encodes the information the computer needs to know in terms of uh, setting itself up. Uh, now, that particular package doesn't have a part number which uh, traces to anything, so if we were to de-encapsulate it, which means to uh, remove that plastic packaging and find the silicon underneath, uh, we can find this uh, die. Uh, eight bond pads, uh, which of course is very typical of an SPI device, very pin limited. And uh, more importantly, there's a marking here on the left-hand side of the die. Uh, Atmel, which of course is a manufacturer, uh, a company which is now, I believe, owned by Microchip. And below that, uh, a die number of AT355L2, I believe. No, I can't find any date sheets on that either, but that's not too surprising. It's quite likely uh, Hynek would have produced uh, these in the millions or tens of millions, and they may have gone for a completely custom design, uh, which would not have been offered as a commodity part. Okay, let's keep on going and see what else we can find on a DRAM DIM. So here's the uh, shell of the circuit board, obviously, now that we've talked about the semiconductors, uh, they've been removed. Uh, the other remaining components, uh, these are series termination resistors. They uh, enable signal integrity. Basically, signals have to be driven in and out of these uh, circuit boards at extremely high speeds, and uh, you need a lot of techniques to make sure the signal makes it in time and doesn't bounce back, and uh, serious termination resistors are a, uh, a way of achieving that, and uh, you can often see them lined up on the edge of the connector. And then coming up here, you can see some capacitor locations. Of course, that provides what is essentially a little local power supply for the DRAM. The main computer's over here supplying power, but has a long inductive lead to before it gets to the DRAM. And... Uh, what you have to do is provide little capacitors here, otherwise the voltage would sag down as the DRAM uh, drove out current. Now you can see some real interesting squiggles on the circuit board. I'm going to zoom into this section here. Uh, these traces are, are zigzagging around. What happened is the design engineer was trying to make sure the uh, length of the electrical connection is absolutely identical. Uh, even a fraction of a centimeter is enough to throw off the time in these really high speed interfaces. So they make sure the actual wire connections are all a matched length, they call it. So you can see now I've got a corner taken out of the dim, and uh, let me just insert a photograph. I've lapped it very uh, flat, and uh, what we can see is a six-layer circuit board, the two outside layers, and then one, two, three, four uh, internal layers. And, of course, uh, point out here is a via that, of course, runs through the length of the circuit board. Now, this particular board doesn't have any high-density interconnect or so-called micro-vias. Um, it's uh, simply the through-hole vias uh, on this assembly. Uh, to finish it off, let's come back to the uh, DRAM silicon. Uh, here's an individual die, and uh, to figure out what we're looking at, uh, you pull up the data sheet for it, because the uh, DRAMs are marked in a way that you get a public data sheet. Uh, it's a DDR2 memory, it's a one gigabit part, so certainly an, an elderly part now, it's probably about 10 years old. It makes sense, the computer it came from was, of course, scrapped. 
Uh, let's see, the data sheet says it has eight banks, and uh, we can, of course, see that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, in fact, if you want to keep on going, you can actually start matching up the data sheet with uh, all sorts of neat features on the actual device. Well, there we have it. Things you can find inside a standard uh, DRAM DM.